which this is so bad. I don't know, even know how I'm gonna fix this. It just seems beyond repair. Wee! I'm going to pick up my book. Well, okay, my <laughs> printed up pages of my book. So over the weekend, I tried yesterday really I was trying to figure out a way to print out my book and holy cow once it was all formatted in manuscript format on Scrivener the page count was almost 600 pages <sighs> talk about an overwriter I have written way too much I cannot believe this book is this long there's no reason on earth for this book to be 600 pages long so clearly, I've got a lot of cutting back to do. A lot of cutting out, a lot of snipping and stripping and... Well, not stripping, but... <laughs> my little printer gave up after trying 25 pages, so I was like, okay, there's no way my printer can handle this, so I'm gonna have to take it somewhere to print it. And I looked around at different pricing. FedEx would have charged me $366. Yeah. So obviously didn't go with FedEx. <laughs> so next I looked at Office Depot because I think that's where Kate Cavanaugh gets hers printed, I'm pretty sure. And she usually doesn't spiral bound and I was like, man, that's got to be expensive. If just to print the pages alone at FedEx was going to cost me almost $400, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. That's when I tried printing from home. And then, um, wow, something weird just happened on the screen. I don't know what that was, but anyways. So next, I looked at Office Depot and I found a way to cut my pages down because the limit for pages in a spiral bound is 230 pages. And I was like, man, is there any possible way I can cut this down to 230 pages? And there was. Basically, I made the font smaller and then decreased the spacing between the sentences. And so it's all kind of squished together and tiny, but it is under 230 pages. And so it was able to fit in a spiral bound. So I've had it printed at Office Depot and I'm going to pick it up now. So I'm excited. Ah, see my book kind of in bookish form. Let's go pick this up. Ah. Yeah, in my heart the pain gets smarter when you start to carry me away. Okay, so this Office Max is kind of a little bit sketchy looking from the outside. I actually don't know why they didn't print this at the one closer to my house, because there is one closer that's a little bit nicer. But whatever, I put in my zip code and this is the one that they printed at for some reason. Sorry, the sun is like, there's really no good angle here. But it doesn't matter, we're not here to see me, we're here to see this book. So, here it is, yay! Okay, so here we have the book and I did have to do like I said I had to shrink the font and make everything make sure everything was double-sided to save paper and well I mean I want it double-sided anyways then I also had to make sure that the spacing between the lines was smaller there's probably more that I could have done I mean like I could have reduced the indent there and I think that would have made a really big difference but the point is, I was able to get it down to, I mean, still pretty thick, but it's, hey, it's not 600 pages thick, so that's good. So getting the whole thing done like this with the spiral, spiral binding and everything was only 25 bucks. So, hey, compare that to just printing the pages at FedEx for $400. I mean, yeah, granted it was 600 pages versus 230, but still, that's a huge difference. So yeah, this was definitely the way to go for me. 25 bucks at Office Max to get it spiral bound. And yeah, so now I'm just gonna take this baby home and we're just gonna do a full on read through and I'm gonna take notes as I'm reading through on things that um, I like, things that need to be changed, you know, just whatever. And we're gonna go through this with a red pen and we are gonna be merciless. Well, I don't know about merciless, but we're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get started on this revisions boot camp. Woohoo! Key 
your little darling Pull yourself up with your balloon Hey guys, so today I have not had a chance to work on revisions at all because it's been a busy day. I filmed a day in the life today so you'll see on Friday or what all I've been doing today. I had something to be at tonight, but it ended up being canceled. So now I am going to use this time to actually go on a quick walk with one of my friends. She's gonna walk her dog and I promised I'd go with her because um, she also had this thing tonight that was canceled. And so I thought, okay, well I can use this time to catch up in my steps because I'm competing in steps with my one of my sisters and my husband and they are kicking my bottom. They're way ahead of me right now, even though I started off the day super ahead, falling behind. So I am going to go with them and, I mean, yeah, so I'm just going to go for a walk, drop off this book at the library that is like a week overdue, holy cow. This is the Dazzling Dialogue book, which came so highly recommended and I didn't really care for it that much, but that's okay. Um, yeah. So that's the check-in and then as soon as I'm done with this walk, I'm going to go home and work on my read-through. I have a lot of thoughts about how the read-through is going. A lot of realizations and realizing that my critique partner was right about a lot of things that I was so defensive about. <laughs> what else is new, right? <laughs> so anyways, that's what's going on right now and I'm just going to go for a walk and then I'll check in with you guys in a bit. On a little farm where Siren found a spot to stay Yeah, in my heart the pain gets smart The wind gets start to carry me away So I figured now would be as good a time as any to close this vlog. And I am going to pick up a breakfast burrito from Rancheritos because that's kind of our traveling tradition. Every time we go on a road trip, we have a breakfast burrito from Rancheritos for breakfast. So that's, I'm on my way to get that while Patrick finishes packing up and getting ready to go. Um, and I thought I would just close this vlog while I'm on my way. So. Um, the read-through is going pretty well. It is a long book, holy cow. I admit, there have been some sections that I've just kind of like grazed through or skimmed over and just drawn a long line through the length of the passage and just written on the side, cut all this out, totally unnecessary. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely an overwriter, but I think I know what the, I think I know why I was having such a hard time rewriting the beginning. It's because I didn't know what the problem was. But now that I've been reading through it, I found that the major problem with my beginning is that you don't really get to know the main character, Mercedes, very well, even though it's written in first person. I think I took that for granted, just thinking if it's written in first person, you're gonna feel like you know the character really well, but that's not the case at all. What really ended up happening with my beginning is that I spent so much time describing other characters and what Mercedes is seeing from these other characters that you really don't get to know her thoughts on any of it, and you don't really feel like you know her at all. And so then, when you're stuck with her because she's taken out of her comfort zone and sent away from the people that she knows and loves, you really only care about the people that she knows and loves and you don't really care about her so it's just kind of like oh now we're stuck with Mercedes this blah character and of course that's not what I want for my beginning at all <laughs> and so um, it was really good to do a read through and find that for myself that like wow as a reader I don't feel any connection with 
this main character at all and I'm stuck with her because I'm seeing everything from her perspective. So I definitely did change that and that's why every version of the beginning that I tried to write wasn't working out. It's because I just kept changing where she was and who she was with but what I needed to change was her really. I mean like you don't see any of her real motivations in the beginning. You kind of know what she wants but her drive to get it is not that strong and I think that's why she was hard to relate to. I just really need to kick that up several notches and make her drive a lot stronger for what she wants. I need the reader to understand why she wants it and the reader to want that for her as well. Um, so that when the inciting incident happens, the reader feels the same way that she does about it. That, that makes sense, right? So yeah, so that's the major lesson, that's the major takeaway from my read through over the last week. I feel like that was pretty productive and I'm feeling a lot better. Well, better and worse really about the book because this is the interesting thing about doing a read through to me is that there are moments when I'm like, okay, I see what's wrong here. Now I can fix this and this is exciting. And then there are other parts other moments when it's just like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. I don't know, even know how I'm going to fix this. It just seems beyond repair. Okay, going to order here just a second. Yeah, so it's just like this going back and forth between I'm really excited about this because now I can see the changes that need to be made and so I can make them and I feel empowered and I feel like yeah I'm doing it I'm improving my book even though I haven't started improving it yet because I'm sworn off of fixing anything until I've done the complete read through but I'm taking copious notes but then there's the flip side of it where it's like what if I can't fix this I know that there's all these problems but what if I'm not good enough of a writer to actually fix it what if my book is just doomed to be bad and it's tempting. Rebecca Rodriguez just posted a video where she was talking about how we shouldn't hoard our good ideas and save them for later because then we're never going to get better. Like we need to, if you have a good idea and you want to implement it or you want to practice it, you just have to practice it. And definitely I have been seeing lately that there's this temptation of like, okay, I can see everything that's wrong with my book and I don't exactly know how to fix it and I'm just not that good of a writer right now and I feel like this story and these characters deserve so much better than what I can give them so maybe I should hold off on this and work on something else and then come back to this and make it better. But if I keep doing that, it's never going to get better. And who's to say that my grand ideas that I have right now are the best ideas I'm ever going to come up with? that this book, Untamable, is the best book I'm ever going to write. That would be really sad. <laughs> I am trying to trust that there are greater ideas on the horizon that I just haven't come up with yet and this is my time to practice with this great idea that I have now. So I'm just going to do my best and keep revising and editing and keep reading through next week and so that's really all I have to say for right now. I don't know what I expected from the read through. There are some times when I'm impressed with my writing where I'm like, hey, this is better than I thought that I could do. And then there are other times when I'm like, come on, really, you can do better than this. Um, <laughs> what were you even thinking? And most of those times are like, oh, I was trying really hard to meet my NaNoWriMo deadline because it was midnight and it was the last day of November, you know? Like I can definitely see that in the writing, but still, it's probably going to be this way for every phase of the writing journey that it's tempting to think that every other phase is better than the one that you're currently in. Like when I was drafting, I was like, I cannot wait to get to revisions and editing because it's going to be so much easier because I'll have something to work with. And now that I'm in that phase, I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, I kind of miss drafting. Well, not really. <laughs> Kind of. Sometimes I miss drafting a little bit, but the truth of it is I still have some drafting ahead of me because I need to rewrite the beginning. That'll be some drafting. And it will be a little bit easier to rewrite the beginning because I'm not going off of just like completely scratch. I have something to go off of now, which I didn't have for the original draft. And so that's good. 
I'm just babbling on now. What really needs to happen is I just need to end this vlog so that you all can go on with your lives. Um, though, so yeah, um, once I get to a red light, I can actually look you in the eyes well in the camera. I know this is like a super unflattering angle because my double chin is really emphasized, but uh, hey, that's what you get from a vlog, right? Especially because I vlog on my phone and I'm kind of limited as to where I can put it to. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that concludes this Revisions Bootcamp vlog for week one. Thank you guys so much for watching and for joining me on this journey. Please comment below how your writing journey is going, whatever phase you might be at. Um, and good luck to everybody, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Would you come take a walk with me? We'll cross over the mountains. We'll reach the pale blue sea. I love you. I'm so glad you love me too. And I